is, is that, you know, I suppose there's on uh, a lot of these films, they spend 40 to $50 million do, uh, to do them. They don't really expect to have an actor die halfway through it. So they came to us knowing that the technology, some of the stuff we'd done with Forrest Gump and also Jurassic Park, that uh, we could essentially take his likeness and then drop it in for the rest of the scenes, 20 additional shots that they had wanted. You know, we kind of declined and somebody else did it, right? But in the future, I mean, it's quite obvious what will happen is that you'll probably have movie arrangements where uh, at the beginning of a film, as a security or a reassurance, they will actually scan the actor in a polygonal data set, computer-generated data, okay? And, you know, we can move it fairly well today, but in the future, with, with five to ten years, we'll really be able to move so it So you well. wouldn't, you so could get away they, from using stand-ins or stuntmen, you could make... Yeah, well, we actually use, well, in the shot in Jurassic Park, when the guy buys it off the toilet seat and gets shaken around, uh -huh. that's actually the T-1000 with the shorts on. Okay, yeah. So in other words, where are you going to find a guy where you can put him on wires and whip him all over, you know, like that? See, the problem is physical realities are very constraining. Well, and I guess they're not as hard yeah. to deal with as some temperamental actors as well. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, a lot of them sort of don't understand the fact that they're being recorded onto a medium that was equated with taking a chisel and carving in granite. But now it's more or less like an exosketch. I mean, we can modify the surface. It's only well, are they worried about this? If I was an actor, I'd... Uh... Actually, SAG, the Screen Actors Guild, is very interested in it, which is kind of, you know... I find that interesting. I guess it's a money-related thing, although, I mean, these are essentially, um, hair and skin are difficult today. And uh, to insert um, computer-generated stunt doubles is not difficult today. And on some of the stuff that we did with uh, Death Becomes Her, where we took Meryl Streep's head, right, her body, and shot her with a skull cap on, a blue, uh, blue screen oh, skull cap. Turns. Right, yeah. and we moved her all across the screen, okay? Then uh, we shot a second take of her just with uh, uh, of her head watching her reactions and moving around. Then we added her head on top of that element and then did a computer-generated neck. Now, the truth is we could have, they, those are shot at separate times. We could have added anybody's head at that point, yeah. <laughs> so you will have actors that do exist um, uh, in a synthetic world, you know. Well, have any of them said to you, whoa, you know? We're... Tom Cruise got a little mad about it, actually. What did he say? Well, I, we, we were giving a talk down to the Screen Actors Guild, and he stood up and said, when I give a performance, it's unique. And he's right. He is giving a unique performance, although what he doesn't understand is it's being un recorded into this medium called film, which, as I mentioned before, was equated with, with carving in a granite, although, you know, today we can modify those. It's only 13.3 million colors. So once you've got them on tape, you can make them do... Well, it's not even tape, necessarily. existing data, right? Yeah. So the computer loves to think in, in, in that amount of colors, and it's just a matter of time till we come up with enough paintbrushes to paint those types of things. You know. Well, I mean, is there anything that worries you about this? Oh, yeah, I, I think it's pretty, I don't think it's a good thing, but it's, you know, it's a curiosity-driven well, thing. Well, so you're sort of like Dr. Frankenstein here. You've uh, there's a few, well, there's a few of us, you know. You know, I think that the, the problem is you'll see some of the Coke commercials from a few years ago where you had Cary Grant where they took a strip from North by Northwest and composited him with Paul Abdul. Right, and he goes, what do you say with Paul Wynn for the both of us? To have him say, what do you say with Paul Wynn for the both of us? Paula is nothing. Right, so it's a pretty powerful weapon. But what if evil forces, even more evil than Hollywood, got a hold of this? I mean, is there some way to see Well, you're going to see probably in the future, because it's an entertainment-based thing now to begin with. I mean, the only company that has more silicone graphics than we do, which is the hardware platform we use, we have 350 machines and 290 graphics heads, um, is NASA. And they don't use them to make engine parts, right? So, I mean, they're totally in the simulation as well. And one of the most powerful weapon in the household, of course, is the television, right? So, I remember I, I give these talks to, you know, to 1,200 people, and I said, how many people in this audience have met the President of the United States? And, of course, no one raises their Just hand. Just on TV? Yeah. Right. So whether or not, you know, he's being put on a TV using a camera or, uh, you know, a digital paint box, right, is superfluous. So. But, I mean, could that be used? Could somebody who wanted to do him I think so. I think so. Yeah, I think what so. What could they do? Well, um... You know, for doing digital, well, I mean, write your own scenario, right? Show him in compromising positions, show him in events that he wasn't involved in. Oh, Force yeah. Gump is just an example of that, right? Where we just stuck Force Gump. You know, Tom Hanks wasn't even alive at a lot of those events in those. Now, that was just a sort of standard uh, two-dimensional composite. So does Although, this bother your conscience a little bit? Well, I think, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, I think it's kind of like a rut, an Oppenheimer scenario where you, you're, you know, you're, you're sort of driven by the challenge initially try and prove a couple of things. I wanted to prove that I could build a T-1000 for Terminator and do that. I wanted to prove that I could build a T-Rex because they were pushing puppetronics and stop motion and go motion. I said, we should do the whole thing in computer graphics. And it was objected to initially until, until you, you prove it, right? So then you realize that, well, you know, skin's not impossible and hair's not impossible. You know, it's just a matter of time until, uh, you know, we're going to have actors without addictions and you don't have to pay points to them. And 
or you can have act. See, a lot of actors are getting themselves scanned into data now. Brando, Goldblum, you know, Gina Davis. What? They, so they can live forever in movies. Digital cryogenics, right? Wow. So they can, or they can be in 20 films a year. And if you want the real one, you pay the premium. And if you want the synthetic one, you pay a substantially less amount. Boy. So what's so, next for you? I don't know. I mean, something like The Mask was a lot of fun because it was like a cartoon. It was like, you know, I uh, sort of said it was being like uh, in math class with a substitute teacher, you know. Cause, like, mayhem, <laughs> you went wild. Yeah, you bet. So you're going to keep doing this? Yeah, I hope so. Because yeah. I've heard a rumor you're going to give it all up. No, nah, not really.